Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Prison or get out of town? We're reading from Acts 8 from verse 1 through 4. And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him, but Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Stephen, Saul, two men, similar nationality, two men, different dedication, two men, movers and shakers. Let us go back to the first century in Jerusalem. A phenomenal movement had emerged in recent times. Jesus had gone back to heaven, or so they say, and one Sunday, the beginning of the world-renowned festival of Pentecost, word has it that the Holy Spirit came to one of the upper rooms in Jerusalem and something dramatic happened. Well, as you might imagine, there were thousands of people in the city for the festival, local and people from different countries, and they said that this thing was like nothing else. One of the upper room persons got up and gave a speech explaining this thing that the Holy Spirit did, and when he was done, about 3,000 people from the crowd became believers in the philosophy that this Jesus character had started. From the thing, from that, the thing grew like wildfire. Every day, crowds gathered in Jerusalem to talk about this Jesus movement. And as often as they got together, more and more of the locals were joining the movement. Simultaneously, temple worship on the Sabbath day was affected negatively. And the leaders of the traditional religious community were not amused. Something had to be done. Well, one of the believers, a young man named St Stephen, was alleged to have been spreading false messages about one of the religious heroes, Moses of all persons, and about God. That, my friend, is tantamount to treason. So he was brought to court. The trial attracted a large crowd, and in that crowd was a young leader of Judaism named Saul. Saul saw the trial and heard Stephen's impassioned speech that led to him being publicly executed by stoning. Many of the people who were offended by Stephen's blasphemous speech took part in the act. Saul elected to guard the clothes of the stoners. The very day Stephen died, all hell broke loose. Saul and some other devoted men launched a counter-movement against this growing sect of Jesus followers. This spontaneous response was vicious and dangerous. They attacked the believers wherever they were, in their homes, at the, religious, at the regular meeting places, in the public square. None of them was safe. Men and women were beaten and thrown into prison. If it threw the city into chaos. Saul was undoubtedly the leader, vigorously defending the old tradition and determined to wipe out every trace of this growing religious sect called Jesus' disciples. You see, at that time, no one had come up with the name Christian. Saul and his supporters had the city political and religious leaders supporting them while the believers were defenseless. They could not meet in peace. They were not safe in their homes. They were hunted down and these spontaneous attacks by the establishment could end up in prison or even death. Saul was ruthless. He was determined to destroy the movement and he had government support. What were the believers going to do? Well, soon, some of them had to flee to neighboring Judea and some to Samaria. Judea is Jewish territory, so it wouldn't be long before the Saul people would think of coming there as well to continue their assault against them. Samaria, on the other hand, was nowhere that Jewish people are welcomed, so those who went to Samaria were safe. 
No doubt those who had to leave Jerusalem hoped to return when the persecution died down. That is what they called the movement, persecution, a hostile movement of ill treatment and abuse based on religion. Who knows what would happen when the prisons in Jerusalem became overcrowded and the pretense of a fair trial was a joke because it was justice by popular demand, stone them to death. The believers did not stand a chance. Well, you would think that the ones who escaped, especially to Samaria, would lie low, would stay quiet and not attract undue attention to themselves. After all, this is not some place where you are loved and given a warm welcome. Hmm? Think again. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. That doesn't make sense. Or does it? You had to run away from your home, from your territory, and seek refuge here in Samaria so that you can be safe from those who were determined to throw you into prison for preaching about Jesus. And what do you do when you get here? You are preaching about Jesus? Are you guys for real? Wouldn't you advise them to shut up and just wait out the period? Mm -mm, no such thing. Well, I recall somewhere in the Bible where it says, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Oh, these guys did not only believe that, but they were doing it. They were preaching the word, the gospel, in situations that could turn sour easily. It does not make sense. But really, it does. You see, they were preaching about Jesus. They were preaching a new message of love and hope and salvation. They were telling people their personal stories about what it had been like since they became followers of Jesus. Jesus meant so much to them. Becoming a believer has made such a difference in their lives that here they are, forced to run away from their homes, and yet they are still preaching about Jesus. The Jesus gospel was compelling. The Jesus message was changing lives. The Jesus message was one of love and salvation. The Jesus message Message promised eternal life and people were hungry for this new message. Although they might not be safe for long, nothing could stop these guys from preaching about Jesus. Would you have done that if you were in that group of believers who ran away from Jerusalem? What Jesus has done in your life, would that be sufficient to make you not keep still? But instead, you're living in a foreign land and you are preaching about Jesus? My friend, it sounds crazy, but it would be worth every minute of it because Jesus is what people need today. And you can start telling people about him right where you are because you know that Jesus brings life, abundant life.